You might not envision going racing in a 1962 Pontiac Catalina, unless maybe it's this one. This week's car is not only very unique because it is an extremely low production, factory built race car, but the story about how this car came to be, I think, is just as fascinating. And what we're looking at is a 1962 Pontiac Catalina, but this one is outfitted with the Super Duty option. And that means that this is not your ordinary, average Pontiac Catalina. The short version of the story is that uh, Pontiac in the 50s, in the early 50s, was known as a thrifty, basic mode of transportation. There was nothing fancy about Pontiac in the early 1950s. And by 1955, they tried to change the image to make these cars a little bit flashier. So a gentleman named Bunky Knudsen joined the team as a, a brass executive at Pontiac. And he was a car guy, he was a racer, he, he understood that performance would sell. So they put a whole new marketing spin on Pontiac and they started adding more power to the engines. And I think between 1955 and 1957, the most powerful Pontiac engine picked up over 100 horsepower in just a couple of years. It was pretty incredible. And that turned into successful victories in NASCAR. Uh, Pontiac picked some of the best and brightest to head up their NASCAR team, including Smokey Eunuch. And what they did is evolve the engines up to what we see in this car, which is the 421 cubic inch Pontiac V8. Now, it's hard to believe that you know, five or six years before this 421 came out, a Pontiac V8 only made 150, 180 horsepower, something like that. And this thing was now rated at 405. So it was a tremendous jump very quickly. And Pontiac was very, very successful on the NASCAR track, which translated into super stock drag racing. Uh, in the late, late 50s, early 60s, NHRA super stock drag racing was gaining popularity. And marketing guy Jim Wangers identified the need to uh, put Pontiacs in front of the people at the drag strips in an effort to sell even more cars. Another factor that was kind of interesting is 1958 saw one of the worst years of Pontiac sales ever because of a recession and because the cars you know, really weren't that exciting. But by the early 1960s, Pontiac had nearly doubled their sales volume. So the racing thing really worked. And this car is nearly the pinnacle of Pontiac racing. I think the top happened late 62, early 63, and then Pontiac told them they couldn't go racing anymore. That's a whole nother story. But what we're looking at here is a 62 Catalina. And one of the main differences is that it's a factory built race car. Pontiac was one of the few manufacturers that actually would assemble a race car on the assembly line using Pontiac part numbered race parts. They actually tapped the aftermarket, companies like Edelbrock, to come up with high performance intake manifolds which, as soon as they were designed, Pontiac put a Pontiac part number on them and made them available at a Pontiac dealership. So now it was a Pontiac part and it was legal in NHRA Superstock because it was a factory built part. It's lettered up like a race car because it's a real race car. Uh, the rear end is supported with special traction bars for better traction out of the hole at the drag strip. And check out those tires. They're a, a Raider cheater slick with a cross flag pattern in the rubber. Just amazing stuff. Steel wheels in back, basically nothing inside. All the sound deadener has been deleted. There's no heater, there's no radio, there's no sticky dum dum seam sealer. You just got your four speed handle and attack. Only the stuff you need to go fast to save weight. And the more weight they could save, the faster the car would go. And the biggest weight savings is up here in the front because this whole front clip is made of aluminum. The hood, fenders, bumper, all custom built aluminum stuff but assembled by regular factory workers on the Pontiac assembly line. Amazing car. And the 421 was definitely different from any of the other engines you could buy in your regular you know, family car Pontiac. It was a very high compression engine, uh, came from the factory at over 12 to one compression. And at the time you could put uh, Mickey Thompson pistons in it and bump that to over 13 to one. It had an aluminum dual quad intake manifold. It had special high flow cylinder heads with different valves, uh, a special camshaft that was designed for racing. Even things like the V-belt pulleys on the front of the engine had a deeper groove so that they would withstand higher RPM usage. It had special cast aluminum exhaust manifolds that looked like headers. 
uh, the transmission case is a four-speed transmission with an aluminum case that they added as a Pontiac part number in the later half of 1962. A special rear end with 433 to 1 rear gears, traction bars in the back. All those performance parts added up to what Pontiac called 405 horsepower, but these engines really made a lot more than that. In fact, one of the car magazines, I think they tested these at making over 450 horsepower and well over 500 foot-pounds of torque, but the results were definitely in the quarter mile times that these things laid down. And this particular one was campaigned by a dealership called Packer Pontiac out of Michigan, and they were very, very successful. This one was driven by Howard Macellis and actually won a record at the Indy Nationals, 1173 at 118 miles an hour and a basically factory stock Pontiac Catalina. Today, the car looks better than new. It's been restored, but it really only has, you know, a handful of miles on it. The speedometer was disconnected after it only showed 74 miles, but this was never a street-driven car. This was a race car its whole life. And uh, one of the things we think is so cool about it is that it is a complete period correct time capsule of a car showing you the, uh, the epitome of super stock racing in 1962. Pontiac made 179 Super Duty Catalinas back in 62. Uh, I think this one was number 84 off the assembly line. And that uh, package added just over $1,300 to the price of a Pontiac Catalina. It's a super, super cool car. It's kind of a bummer to think that uh, on the site of Packer Pontiac, today is a uh, takeout Chinese restaurant. It's even more sad to think that the entire Pontiac division doesn't even exist anymore, especially when they have such rich heritage as factory built race cars like this 1962 Packer Pontiac Catalina. And the biggest mystery of all is what does the 7 11 fourth stand for that's painted on this car? And basically, the Packer team had a series of these cars, a, a first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. The fifth was a 63 car that had these Swiss cheese frame rails. And each iteration, they would add the next version number, the fourth, fifth, etc. And the 7-11 wasn't for a convenience store. Uh, back in the late 50s, the NHRA allowed you to pick your own numbers. And the Packer team thought it was fun to uh, use a gambling term. And this one was 7 come 11. The odometer only shows like 75 miles on this car. If you do the math, that might be what, 150 trips up and down the drag strip. Very cool stuff. You can see more of it on our website at musclecaroftheweek.com. Check the Facebook page for more and the YouTube channel where you can subscribe to always get the next episode of Muscle Car of the Week.